I don't think I like my own company so that. much, and I like thinking women now and who I go like... shopping all the time. I'll pass on that one. <laughs> oh, they're very articulate. Very, very oh, do you articulate. want to ask me why I took up writing? I couldn't bear the thought of all those people looking at me. Really? <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, my main interest in life, my passion in life, my thing that I'm most interested in is nature versus nurture. So I thought, how can I cunningly put that into a story? Because I like old-fashioned stories with beginning, middles and ends. And I like good people to triumph and baddies to get their comeuppance. But I'm also, I actually don't believe in good and evil because I think it's all to do with conditioning. I don't think anyone's evil, even Hitler. So, and I also think the saddest thing that you can read in a book is a good person who does the wrong thing for the right reasons. Or does the wrong thing for the right reasons. But isn't necessarily a bad person. That to me is the saddest, so I thought I would try this. So the only way I could do that if I'm not giving away the plot, is to separate two identical twins at birth, which has been done often. And it can either be incredibly corny or funny. So I wanted to do it in a serious way, to really study the difference between two uh, identical twins brought up in two completely different ways. When I used to read about the um, Irish in Australia, first of all they said in the history book, what we learned about the Irish was only one sentence in the whole of fifth and sixth year for the Leaving Cert. And it was, while, Ar while England was um, struggling for her life, Ireland was stabbing her in the back. That's the First World War. Um, and then in novels, the Irish were always sort of feckless, drunk, charming, illogical. And the, the aristocracy were always um, well-educated, controlled, fair, uh, temperate, all these kinds of things, which of course is a load of rubbish. So I decided to turn the tables and to have the native Irish desired by the Anglo-Irish mm. instead of the other way around. Yes, I've decided after, you know, I think we're all going through a phase now of modern art being abstract, modern music being discordant, modern stories having no plot, big deconstructions and so on. But from my vantage point of 70 years, I think that everybody loves the story with the beginning, middle and end. And everyone loves a picture that they can identify. And everyone loves a piece of music with a melody. So basically, I am a traditionalist. One question everybody asks is how many drafts? So I say I did about 20, at least. Some of them would be partial drafts, you know, you'd do a chapter over and over again. Um, but I'd say 20, all told. The writing, the style, I think that's something you have. I don't think you can do anything about it. I think you either have an ear for language or you don't an ear for rhythm or you don't. Um, and I find with my background in being an English teacher that I'm very uh, strict about grammar, that I have to have the sentences correct. I wouldn't be able to write in a modern way of writing because I wouldn't know how to. Uh, so once again, I'm traditional in that sense. Um, no, I think, I think plot and characters are so interwoven that you can't separate them. A certain person will do such and such. Mm. You know. And I think that's quite magic when it happens, when they do, they do have to follow their trajectories. Mm. They can't make a sudden change just to suit the plot. I definitely think writing is my, would be my first love if I had taken it up first, a long time ago. I like the painting because it's quicker. I can do a painting a week, whereas a book would take me two years. It's more sociable because people could come in and have a look at it and talk about it. Uh, 
you go to see the framers, you go to the galleries, it's much more social, but you talk to other painters, you talk about colour and so on, mm. whereas writing is completely solitary. I know I bored my family to death, including you, mm -hmm. Dara, talking about my characters, because to me they were so real, I wanted to talk about them, I didn't want to talk about anything else. <laughs> and um, it's very like having a new baby, where you're really interested and nobody else is. The first rule about picking a painting is the subject matter, and I feel the same with a novel. Don't pick a boring landscape, or don't pick a face that doesn't fascinate you. Don't pick a story that doesn't interest you. So only for that reason, subject matter, I think, is number one in both cases. Mm. Colour and composition and language and all that comes second. But first of all, pick something that you find interesting. That's the only connection I could see between the two, really. I think an outsider always has a better view of things. For example, I've noticed if you go into a family where there's a scapegoat, none, nobody in the family notices because they're so used to it. Mm. And they think that person is being picked on because he deserves it. Whereas an outsider might come in and just see that it's pure injustice and it's become ingrained in the family. And when I was coming over here the first time, I came over by boat and we stopped in um, South Africa. And everyone there I met on the day that I was there told me how wonderful apartheid was. They said, if you lived here, you'd know that it's the only system that possibly works. But you have to live here to know that. So as an outsider, you could see it's, it was most unjust and cruel. Um, also, the same thing you can notice in a family, an outsider is needed to see that someone is a favourite, is being favoured above the other children. Um, so I think an outsider's vantage point is really good. The other reason it's good is because when you're reared in a country, you think those rules are set in stone, this is how life mm. is, and it's not until you go to another country you realise that it's purely cultural, that, um, it, that there are such things as nat national, national differences and national characteristics. It, I, but I, wrote, I went through up a lot of uh, dark alleys and went through the wrong crossroads and so on. And then I would just delete and go back and start again until it was logical. You tend to get a bit carried away. So I'd say on the whole I wrote the book three times. I'd say I deleted the book, book's volume by twice. But that was because the plot is extremely complicated. There are an awful lot of characters in it. I think I bit off, I didn't bite off more than I could chew because I did chew it. But um, it was complicated. But the basic idea was that two babies were to be separated at birth. That was the start of it. And then I had to say, how would that happen? And by the time I decided on that and worked it all out, it didn't happen till the end of the book. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to write a sequel. Yeah, the twins, that's going to be their story from the age of naught till they're 18. And that's going to be set in Australia, is it? Half and half. half. One's in Australia, one's in Ireland. So it'll be basically 50-50.